All right, Shavu Sai. Good morning. Let us begin. We have a beautiful, beautiful daf ahead of us today. A lot, a lot to do today. Begin by thanking our sponsors. To thank all of our Talmud Torah sponsors for the month of Nisan. Jerry and Abby Applebaum for dedicating this shiurim in memory of Basia Bas Chaim. David Ben Avram, Drs. Paul and Linda Weinberg for dedicating the shiurim in the of, a, of a, the Aliyah for the Neshama of Mordechai Yoshua Ben Paris, Moshe Valeh and Miriam. Paul and Kathy Pollock in the Schluss of Rufus Shlema for Donna Baker Matson, Stephen Terizin with gratitude to Hashem for their grandson Bunim Svi Hirsch, Naftali Tilson with Akara Satov to his Haver Benjamin Wall and with wishes for a Chai Kosher B'Samech to the entire Shir, and Avram and Shane Kelman in the Schluss of an Aliyah for the Neshama of Sarah Braina Bas Yoshua Heschel. We hope that in the merit of our Tamil Torah, all of the Neshamas will have an Aliyah and the families in the Chamra Bosa. With that, let us begin. We have an ambitious goal today of Emir Tashem finishing the daf with a very, very, very special surprise in the daf, embedded in the daf for us. So as I said, today's daf is Lamites. Hopefully you did your homework. We are picking up on the second to last line of Lamed Ches Lamed Beis, 38B, Abayi Omer. Post member again, we're still in the same topic. I just wanted to cover a little bit of ground. We're still in the same topic, namely trying to distinguish between the Reisha and the Seifa of the Mishnah. We had two cases in which a, a Shomeres Yavam went ahead and, well, we have two cases. One case is where she inherits property while waiting for Yibum. The second is where she dies while waiting for Yibum. And the Mishnah launches into a discussion regarding the laws of inheritance as they apply to this particular woman. So Abayi Amar, Reisha, the Naflo, Kishi, Shomeres Yavam. Abayi says the Reisha, the first case in the Mishnah, is where she inherited property when she is a Shomeres Yavam. She's waiting for Yibum. And what's the law? A Seifa, the Naflo, Kishi, Tachtov, the Baal. The Seifa is talking about where she already passed away, where she, where, after she had already performed Yibum. Top of Lamedes, because Savra Abai and Abai holds, Yado Kiyada. Ultimately, again, her hand is, or I should say, his hand is like her hand, meaning that Halacha Lamaisa, he acquires in the same way that she acquires Amalei Rava. Rava says, well, one second. Well, that's not totally true because Halacha Lamaisa, if you're telling me that the Seifa is a case where they're already married, then everyone agrees that at the end of the day, the truth is in certain, in certain ways, the husband has even greater rights than the wife. Rather, again, we're back to what we said before. Both cases are talking about where she acquired property while she was still a Shomer Yavam. She was waiting for Yibum. Ah, okay, so I'll say, listen to this. The Reisha is a case where the Yavam did not yet perform Ma'amar. Sifa da'avid ba Ma'amar. So therefore, I will say, with the Yimar is making the suggestion, the Kasama Rava, Ma'amar the Beishamai, Osa Vadai Arusa, the Safek Nisua. So ultimately, again, the Mishnah reflects the view of Beishamai. Beishamai says that Ma'amar creates essentially a status of Vada Arusin. Most remember again, we've seen this before already. Fundamental machlok is Beishamai Salal as to what Ma'amar accomplishes. Beishamai holds Ma'amar is really powerful and Ma'amar is really effective. Then Ma'amar, in this formulation here, according to Beishamai, Ma'amar goes ahead and creates a situation of what he calls Vada'i Erosin Safek Nisuin. What does that mean? Vada'i Arusa Lithos Patsara. So Ma'amar creates Vada'i Erosin in that after you go ahead and do ma'amar, what the oven does ma'amar, with the particular woman, he has pushed aside the co-wives. So at this point in time, again, halacha l'maysa, this is the designated wife, and the tsaros themselves, the co-wives, are now exempted from yibum. The suffix nisua, and ultimately creates suffix nisuin, lachlok benechasim. Ultimately, again, to allow him to potentially go ahead and divide up property. Again, in the event, let's say that this woman dies, to divide up property with her family. Incredible. Itmar Mishmei Drebe Lazar. I'm sorry. Itmar Mishmei Drebe Lazar. Kavase Drava. Itmar Mishmei Drebe Yossi. Rabbi Hanino. Kavase Dabai. So now we have a fundamental machlokis of Ayin Rava as to how to interpret the case of the Mishnah. So the Gemara says as follows, Umi Amar Rabbi Lazar, Hachid Rabbi Lazar actually say this, Ma'amar Rabbi Lazar, Ma'amar Rabbi Shammai, Eino Kona, 
Ela Litchos Matsara Bilvad. Yet to we learned that Halacha Lamaisa, Ma'amar according to Beish Shammai, is only effective to do what? To go ahead and essentially, Litchos Matsara Bilvad. Litchos Matsara means that after the Yavam does Ma'amar with, the, with a particular wife, the other wives essentially are free. They're free, to, they're, free to, they're free to marry, they're free to go about their business. So the Gemara says, Epoch, you're right, switch around the shitos. The Yavai is saying, the other possibility is, no, you don't have to turn around the shitos. So ultimately, Belazar will say like this, or, or in interpretation of Belazar will say like this, when do I say ultimately again? When did I state my position? Meaning that a get is not going to be enough to dissolve the marriage. Rather, what? She's going to require chalitza as well. Lachlok bin Chasim Delokani Mi Amri. But at the end of the day, to go ahead and split up. I'm sorry. Um but ultimately, again, to go ahead and say that he does not acquire property, has to divide a property. Did I ever state anything like that? To which the Gemara says, Papa, do you could demasnisin kavase da baye, the afagab de kashemesa? So Papa says, ultimately, the Mishnah seems to really align itself with Abaye, even though, even though the case of where she passed away seems to pose a problem. Okay? Diktani. Because remember again, what did the Mishnah say? The Mishnah spoke about property, nichnasim that came into the marriage or that go out with her. What does it mean, property that comes in and property that goes out? It must be referring to property that comes into the domain of the husband and that leaves the domain of the husband into the domain of the father. The Afagav, the Kashia Mesa, and even though again we have the question about the case where she passed away, instead of going ahead and talking about the case where Halacha Lamaisa, Instead of going ahead and slicing the case of where she passed away, so instead of going ahead and setting this up as a case where she passes away, and then the discussion is who divides up the property, go ahead and dis- uh, dissect or di- um, distinguish in the case ultimately where she's still alive, and don't make it a question about inheritance, but rather make it a question about usage. Sulo midi. Mar says it's a good point, but there's nothing more to discuss regarding this matter. So we'll say this concludes this sugya over here. Just just to, to kind of highlight this a little bit. Um, I'm thinking about the Rambam with me. Okay. So we'll say so the Rambam paskins the Rambam paskins that halacha lemaisa. Halacha lemaisa. The point the point that I think is important to take from here is the status of a shomeres yavam. Right? And the status of a Shomeris Yavam is that when a woman is waiting for Yibum, the Rambam Paskins like the opening line of this Mishnah, which is a Shomeris Yavam, her Yavam has absolutely no rights in her property. So this is incredibly important. So therefore, again, whatever she does with her property, she buys, she sells, she inherits, the Yavam has absolutely no rights in that. So she, you know, so let's say, for example, she sells off all of her property, then she gets married, or then she does Yibom. The Yavam has no rights to go back and extract any of that property. Now, remember, contrast that with a typical marriage, right? In a typical marriage, a wife, let's say, comes away, Rachel comes into a property, Rachel comes into a prop- marriage with a five fields, right? She's now married to Ruvain. She decides, you know what, one day I'd like to have a little bit more uh, cash on hand. So she sells off a field. What's the loch in that case? Ruvain could go back and, and extract the property from the purchasers. Why? Because since Ruvain has payros, Ruvain has usage. Remember again, Rachel holds on to the title of her property, but Ruvain has usage. That usage allows him to avoid any sale that she makes. The point that the sugi is making over here is that a yavam does not have that power. And I will say this goes back to a same central theme, which is, although there is a zika, right? There's a zika. There is a a, a quasi-marital bond that exists between the yavam and the yavama. It's a weak bond. It's It's a connect, or maybe what we'd call it is a connection and not necessarily a bond. So it's a connection in that, again, halacha lamaisa, 
there is a relationship there that if neither of them want to pursue it has to be actively dissolved but Lamaisa does not give him active rights in anything else incredible it will say what about the case ultimately where she passes away, right? the Seifa of the Mishnah, where Halacha Lamai says she passes away, what do we do in that case? So there the Rambam Paskin is like Beis Hillel, that Halacha Lamai says all the property remains in its Chazaka status. So whoever was Mochzak, whoever had the property, ultimately, whoever has the Chazaka on the property, ultimately retains the property. Incredible. But let's say, let's go back there. Kan Saharihi, so let's just remember again, the Mishnah says something very interesting. The Mishnah said, once they do Yibum, once they do Yibum, ultimately she is treated like his wife, right? Lashna the Mishnah was, Kansa, Harehi ki ishto l'chol davar. Right, if they get married, if they get married, she is like his wife in every matter. So we'll say, the Gemara says, Lamai so what, like, what is that, what does that mean? In other words, what is the Mishnah coming to add on? So this is very interesting. Amar Yosef Rechanina, Lomar, Shemagar Shabiget, Umachzira Umagar Shabiget. Very interesting. And we'll say, what does it teach me? That after the couple does Yibam, after, after Shimon does Yibam with Rachel, if they decide a year later, 10 years later, a month later, that you know what, this marriage is not working out, he has to divorce her with a get, with a regular document of divorce. Not only that, but Allah Chalamai, so let's say they divorce, and then they decide, you know what, we'd like to reconcile. That Allah Chalamai, so as long as she has not married anyone else in the interim, they are permitted to get back together. To which the Gemara says, Pshita, I don't understand why, why what's, what's the Chiddush over here? They're just like any other marriage. Ah, I'll tell you why. It's very simple. I might have thought that since this is a Yibum relationship, maybe the Yibum identity of the relationship devolves upon the marriage in its entirety. To the point that even if you want to dissolve this marriage, how do you dissolve Yibum? How do you dissolve Yibum? With Chalitza. With Chalitza. Now, we'll say, now again, not only do you, not, not only do you dissolve a, yib, a Yibum bond with Chalitza before Yibum was performed, but the Havamina is, V'lakhalo li'isha v'yibma. See, I've said, with the Gemara Zashin, where the Pasuk says, he will take her as a wife, v'yibma, and he'll do Yibum. The Gemara Zashin, you might have thought, that the Yibum identity of this relationship devolves upon the marriage in its entirety, to the point that even if you want to dissolve this marriage, what? You have to dissolve it like Yibum, i.e. with Chalitza, Kamash no. Kamash that Halacha Lamaisa, once they do Yibum, this morphs into a normal marriage or in every way. And therefore, if they want to dissolve it, they need to go ahead and do Chalitza. So the Gemara says, Machzira. Furthermore, again, after they divorce, if he wants to remarry her, he can remarry her. Pshita, Sadayat Hamina Mitzvah Deramiya Rachman Ale Avra Avda Hashta Hashta Teikom Ale Be Isra Eshazach. So, most this is very interesting. Why would you have thought otherwise? Listen to this. I might have thought like this. The Torah says there's an erva, right? I will say, who's the erva? The erva is the erva is my brother's wife, right? Eshazach. The Torah says that that prohibition is lifted, right, in order to do yibum. But I might have thought that once they do Yibum and then they decide to get divorced, then what? Perhaps the Isra Eishas Ach returns. Right? Perhaps it just comes back. Kamash Molono. Kamash Molono say that essentially, once Yibum occurs, this is fascinating, once Yibum occurs, the Isra Eishas Ach is totally dispensed with. There is no longer any Isra Eishas Ach to the point that even if they marry, right? Once they marry, even if they divorce, if they decide to remarry, Ultimately, that would be permitted. Incredible. They mahachanami. So, one second. Why don't we say that? That's actually a good svara, right? Why don't we say that? Then Allah Chalamai said the Isra Eishasach is lifted to Allah for Yibum, but once they decide to divorce, the Isra Eishasach comes back and would preclude what? Would preclude what? Them remarrying each other. To which the Gemara says, Amakra, Velak Chalo Isha, Kevan Shalakha, Harehi Ki Ishta Lechol Dover. Because the the Pasik says, he will take her as a wife. And the Torah indicates to us that once Yibam is performed, this relationship transforms into a normative marriage. Incredible. Ubuvashate, we'll say first white line. Ubuvashate ksubasa. And I will say now there is now, so in, essentially the Mishnah says once Yibam is performed, this becomes a totally normal marriage. There is one notable exception. What's the notable exception? Ksuva. Ksuva, that halacha lamaisa, the ksuva of this woman 
is against, or I should say, is, is leveraged against whose estate? Ruvain's. Right? Remember again, this is the one major distinction. She has no ksuva claim upon her yavam, upon Shimon. Her ksuva claim goes against the property or is levied against the property of Ruvain. Now I will say, now interestingly enough, remember, who inherits Ruvain? Who inherits Ruvain? Right? Shimon, the brother, right? The yavam. So interestingly enough, remember again, Shimon may end up carrying the, the, the responsibility, but Lamaisa, remember as we spoke about yesterday, we will say, why does this matter? When you get married, when you get married, what's encumbered to the ksuva? What's encumbered? Everything, mamish everything. Real property, movable property, which again means that as a married man, if you want to sell anything, technically speaking, anything you sell is encumbered, right? Has, has, has some type of claim against it, I ksuva, the difference over here is that when Shimon does Yibum, it is only Ruvain's property that is encumbered to the Ksuva, but Shimon's own property is unencumbered. Says Gmar, my taima. Why is that? Both say this is fascinating. My taima, Isha Hikrula Mina Shamayim. You know, both say, do you know why? Because ultimately, again, Hakadish Barahu provided this woman for this man. I will say, which is another way of saying what? Shimon did not really choose this relationship. Right, he didn't choose it. It was thrust upon him. Now there's a mitzvah for him to do yibum. He's doing the mitzvah. Look at Rashi, almost right across from Rashi. Mina shamayim below she beid nechasam leksuvasa v'yachal amachram b'chol eshiyirze. See, I say the idea of a ksuva being encumbered. Right? Why? Why is it that when a man gets married, his property is encumbered to the ksuva? Why? Because he's willingly entering into this relationship. So part of what he, right? So what a woman comes into our relationship, she brings with her her property, she brings with her her possessions, and although she retains title, her husband gets full usage. What does the husband bring financially to the table? A ksuva commitment, and ultimately, again, a lien against all of his property. But that assumes that both parties are coming in willingly to this relationship. In this case over here, the Yavim didn't actively choose to be part of this. So, sure, he's choosing to do Yibum, but Lamaisa contextually, he did not choose to be in this situation. Isha hiknalo minasham hayim. Ultimately, again, HaKadosh Baruch brought about this situation. So reflective of the fact that he did not choose this, there's no encumbrance against his property. Rather, it's against the deceased brother's estate. I said, you might as well say, now listen to this. The last lay min are shown, takinim shayna. But say, what happens if Ruben died penniless? Ruben died penniless. So there is no estate of the first husband, right? So what happens to Rachel's ksuva? Listen to this. Takinu la misheni. Ultimately, again, they, Chazal instituted and they said, Shimon, you have to give her a ksuva. So what's an interesting case? Say, in other words, normally what we'll say is when Ruvain has property, so the ksuba will come from Ruvain's property. But Allah if Ruvain doesn't have any property, then the ksuba will have to come from Shimon's property. Why? See, I will say, there are a couple of reasons for the ksuba. Number one, ksuba gives a woman a sense of financial security, both during marriage as well as in the event of death or divorce. So there's a benefit for the woman. There's another benefit, benefit for the woman that Chazal wanted to create an instrument that would make a man think twice before divorcing his wife. In other words, I will say, well, what are we concerned about sometimes in the course of marriage? That if divorce becomes too easy, then what happens? What happens? As soon as someone gets upset, they can kind of pull that trigger. So what's the beauty of a ksuva? A ksuva causes you to pump the brakes a little bit. How so? Because if you're going to get divorced, that's fine. But understand that what? There's a lot of money you're going to have to pay. So because there's a lot of money you have to pay, it's kind of just a built... Now again, sometimes divorce is required. Sometimes divorce is necessary. Sometimes the money has to be paid. But what it does is, it just forces the husband to pump the brakes a little bit and to think about, again, am I making a rash decision because I'm upset? Or at the end of the day, is this truly the right course of action. So therefore I will say either way, halacha is because of security of the woman, or in order to get the man to pump the brakes before any decision to divorce, halacha lamaisa, if Ruvain, the deceased husband, does not have any property, Shimon will have to go ahead and provide Rachel with a ksuba from his own property. So again, I will say this halacha lamaisa. So halacha lamaisa again, so first of all, number one, when they get married, the marriage transforms into a regular marriage, so therefore to dissolve it, you need to get. If when they get divorced, they want to reconcile and remarry, they can do so, as long as she hasn't married anyone else in the interim. 
her ksuva is against her deceased husband, her first husband's estate, but should there be no property in Ruvain's estate, the ksuva is against Shimon's estate. Beautiful. Bosai Mishnah. Mishnah, fascinating, fascinating Mishnah. Mitzvah begadul yabim. They both say the mitzvah is upon the oldest brother to do yibum. Mitzvah is upon the oldest brother to do yibum. Lo rasa. We'll say what happens if the oldest brother, right? We'll say, by the way, when we say oldest brother, oldest brother means oldest brother in this circumstance, right? In other words, that we'll say, by the way, how incredible is it that we're learning the sugya of Bukhar, right? Antinus Bukhorim. We'll say, how incredible is that? How absolutely incredible is that? So we'll say, so again, I just, I just want to point out over here, Godel just means the oldest surviving brother. So, for example, if it's the Bukhar who passed away, Right, let's say in this case, Ruben, right, the brother is the Bachar. So it means again, the oldest brother, the next oldest brother. So mitzvah begadul yabim. The mitzvah is upon the oldest brother to go ahead and do yibum. Lo ratza, if he doesn't want to do yibum, mahalchin al kola achin. Ultimately, they go down the list. Go down the list for all the brothers. Lo ratzu, both say, what happens if they go down the list? Let's imagine for a moment this Ruben, Shimon, Levi, Yehuda. Four brothers. Four brothers. Ruben passes away. Okay, so we go to. We go to we go right, sorry. We go to Shimon, right? We go to Shimon. We say, Shimon, no, what are you gonna do? So Shimon doesn't want to do Yibum. We go, Levi, Yehuda, no one wants to do Yibum. What's Talacha? So the Gimar's low ratsu. Now actually I should take it back. I'm saying they don't want to do Yibum. We'll see in the Gimara what low ratsu actually means. So if no one wants to take action, Chosrin eats al Gadol. We go back to the oldest brother. In this case, Shimon. We say to him, Alecha, Alecha mitzvah, O chalotz, O yabem. So we'll say, the buck stops essentially with the oldest brother. And if none of the other brothers want to do anything, we go back to the oldest brother, we say, listen, oldest brother, right? Buck, right? buck stops with you, you got to take action. Either do chalitza or do yibum. In other words, you don't have to go ahead and do yibum if you don't want to do yibum. But Allah say, you have to do something. You have to do something. Tala bekatan at shiyak dil obagad la shiyam dinas hayam. So we'll say, listen to this. Let's say the brothers say, you know what? Our youngest brother, in this case Yehuda, he's a really good boy. He's a really good boy. He's not old enough right now to go ahead and do Yibum, but wait for him a little bit. Wait for him a couple of years, and ultimately he's going to do Yibum. So in this case, they said, let's wait for the younger brother. Or Shimon, who is now the oldest brother, is away on business. He's overseas. He'll be back in a little bit. Let's wait for him. So what do we say? Omrim lo alecha mitzvah, o chalotz, o yabeim. We say to him, ultimately, we say to that older brother, what are you saying? We say to the older brother, or we say to whoever is there, the oldest brother who is present, we don't wait. We don't wait, right? At the end of the day, we're not waiting for the younger one to grow up. We're not waiting for anyone to go overseas, to come back from overseas. We don't delay the mitzvah. Rabbi say, I want to show you something amazing. Take a look at Rashi, the, sec- the last short line of Rashi. Alecha mitzvah. Even though Shimon is older than you, is overseas. Since now you're the oldest brother who's here, the mitzvah we do not go ahead and delay mitzvahs. I will say, do you know where that principle comes from? Mitzvah habali yadecha al tachmitzena ushmartem es hamatzos. Al tikri matzos, ela mitzvos. And we'll say, absolutely incredible. Remember, we learned this concept. Torah says, Shmartem es hamatzos. Sorry, Shmartem es hamatzos. He's supposed to go ahead and, and watch, watch the matzos, that they don't go ahead. Shmartem es hamatzos. Don't, sorry, don't go ahead and make sure to perform the mitzvos. And the Gemara says, when a mitzvah comes to your hand, al tach mitzana, don't allow it to become chametz. Don't allow, right? So the idea over here, the Gemara says, is you say to the brother who's here, we don't wait. Shahuye mitzvah, lo say, you can't allow your mitzvahs to become chametz. Jose, isn't this incredible? We just learned about the Bechar, Tainas Bechorim, a reference to chametz. Don't allow things to become chametz. Erev Pesach, absolutely incredible. And we're going to see that a little bit more in just a moment. Jose, but the idea being is that Allah, we don't wait, we don't wait for any of the other brothers, even if there's a younger brother who's going to do older brother, we don't wait. We go ahead and we force the one of the, the oldest present brother to take decisive action. Says the Gimar, we'll say, listen to this case. Itmar, bias cotton vechalitzas godal. We'll say, what if there's a what if there's a what if there's a choice between the following? Bias cotton vechalitzas godal. So we'll say, let's say in this case over here, the oldest brother, we'll call him Shimon, wants to do chalitza, but Yehuda is willing to do yibum. 
So which is preferable? Chalitza with the oldest brother or Yibam with the youngest brother? Is there a preference? So Pligi Rabbi Yochan, Rabbi Yosho Ben Levi, Machlokes, Chad Amar Bias Katan Adifa, one says Yibam with the younger brother is preferable. The Chad Amar Chalitza is God Ladifa. I will say, do you hear what the Shaila is? You hear what the Shaila is? There's a tension. What's the tension? On one hand, we say if there's a choice between Yibam and Chalitza, we assume that which one is preferable? Which one is preferable? Yibam. On the other hand, we just got finished saying in the Mishnah, Mitzvah Begadal. Right? The mitzvah to take action in this case is upon the oldest brother. So what do you do if there's a clash? The oldest brother is willing to act, but he's only willing to do yibum. The youngest brother is, sorry, the oldest brother is willing to act, but he's only willing to do chalitza. The youngest brother is willing to act, he's willing to do yibum. So which is preferable in this case? So machlokes, machlokes, chadam rabbi es katan adifa, chadam chalitza es gadla adifa. One says yibum of the younger brother is, uh, is better, and one says chalitza of the older brother. Man da'amar bias katan adifa. The one who says that ultimately, again, bias katan is better. To ha mitzvah yibum, because the mitzvah yibum is preferable. So better to have yibum with the youngest brother than chalitza with the oldest. Man da'amar chalitza es gadla adifa. And we'll say the other opinion will say no. Since the Mishnah says that the mitzvah is with the oldest brother, whatever the oldest brother is willing to do is better than whatever anyone else is going to do. So if the oldest brother is willing to do chalitza, we'll take it. We'll take it. So we'll say fundamental locus. So let's analyze. So the Gemara says, Tanan, we learned in the Mishnah, Lo Ratza. The Bible says, remember again, this is the Mishnah. The Mishnah said, if the oldest brother does not want to, does not want to, we go to the other brothers. So my my love, lo ratza liyabim el So what does it mean, lo ratza? The oldest brother didn't want to. What does it didn't want to? The pastors didn't want to mean he doesn't want to do yibum. So we go to the other brothers and we see if anyone else is willing to do yibum. And we see that we go to the other brothers. Shmamina, what do you see from here? Shmamina bias katan adifa. So we'll say, what do you see from here? You see from here that Yibum with a younger brother is preferable to Chalitza with an older brother, to which the Gemara says, no, 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 lo, lo ratza lachlot velo liyabim. No, 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 what the Mishnah actually means is, we go to the older brother, and the older brother is unwilling to do anything, right? He's unwilling to do Yibum or Chalitza, just simply unwilling to act. Dikavos, that's when we go to the other brothers. Dikavosa, gabi ach, and this is the case of the Mishnah. You go to the brothers, and none of the brothers want to do anything. So the Gemara says, So we'll say, if that's the case, and none of the brothers, so we'll say, the Gemara says, no, the case of the Mishnah is, go to the older brother. So the brother, Yibam Rechalitza. The older brother says, pass, pass. Right, that's, that's Shimon. We go to Levi, we go to Yehuda. Everybody says the same thing. Then what does the Mishnah say? We go back to Shimon. So we'll say, so why do we go back to Shimon? Lemich piye. You go back to Shimon because we force him. Shimon, you must now do something. You have to do either Yibum or Chalitza. To which the Gemara says, So why don't we go ahead and force one of the other brothers? Why do we have to go back and force Shimon? Kevan de mitzvah alei didei ramya. Sorry, kevan de mitzvah alei didei ramya le didei kaipinon. Rebosa, because since the primary mitzvah of Yibum slash Chalitza rests with the oldest brother, what we do is, we'll wait if the oldest brother doesn't want to do anything. Fine, we'll wait to see if any of the other brothers want to act. But if none of the other brothers want to act, then ultimately the responsibility comes back to the oldest brother, and we force him to take decisive action in one direction or another. To which the Gemara says, Tanan, Tala Bekatan Achi Yagdil. So we'll say, so we still have this Machlokas. We still have this Machlokas. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, what's more preferable? Yibom with the younger brother or Chalitza with an older brother? To which the Gemara says, let's see, Tanan. Ultimately, we go ahead, let's say the brothers said, let's wait for Yehuda until he gets older, right? He's the youngest of the brothers, right? So they say, let's wait for him until he gets older. He'll do Yibum, right? So what's the halacha? In Shomen Lo, we don't listen to the brothers. Rather, we force decisive action now. To which Mar says, V'i b'yas katan adifa, amai in Shomen Lo, nintar dilma gadol miyabim. But I don't understand. If Yibam with the younger brother is preferable to Chalitza with an older brother, then what? Then why not go ahead and just wait? Shouldn't you just wait? Wait and halacha lemaisa, let the younger brother get older and he could perform Yibam. To which the Gemara says, Ulatamech, same idea, but say, but the way the other case, let's say they say, let's wait for the older brother until he comes back from overseas. We don't listen. Amai, 
Nintar Dilma Asi Vichalitz. Why don't we wait for him? After all, again, let's wait for him and what? Maybe he'll do Chalitza. To which the Gemara says, Ella Kol Shahuye Mitzvah Lo Mishahinon. Rabbi say, what a profound yisod. When it comes to the performance of a mitzvah, we do not wait. We do not delay. Rabbi say, I just want to point out over here what the, what the Mishnah is highlighting is that Halacha Lamaisa, Yivam or Chalitza has to get done. Rabbi say, by the way, it's also out of deference for this woman. In other words, you cannot leave her in limbo, right? She, she has a right, she has a right to know either there's gonna be Yibu, there's gonna be Chalitza, but there's absolutely no reason to string her along. So the Gemara's first off from an interpersonal perspective, and I will say also from, from, a, from a halachic perspective, we do not delay in the performance of mitzvah. So I will say, what a profound yisod in life also. Shahuye mitzvah lo mishir say, when something in life needs to get done, get it done. Do not delay. Do not, I will say, how often in life do we just kick the can down the road, right? And then we kick the can down the road. And I will say, it's interesting. When someone kicks the can down the road, really do we ever say, oh, I'm just punting. I'm just delaying, right? What do we often say? I'm waiting for the gadol to come back from Medina Sayam, right? I'm waiting for the katan to grow up. In other words, there's always a good svara to punt, right? There's always a good start to hit can down the road. The Gemara says, don't delay. Don't be one of those people who always has an excuse not to act. Don't be one of those people who always has an excuse to delay, to tarry, right? Shehuye mitzvah lo mishahinon. At the end of the day, if something needs to get done, get it done and get it done now. And I will say again, herein lies the distinction between chametz and matzah, right? What's the distinction between chametz and matzah? So only one thing. It's the same ingredients between chametz and matzah. The only distinction is, the only distinction is time, time. So I will say again, th this, I just want to point out, I just want to point out, if you want to understand the entire hashkaf of the Yom Tova Pesach, is this line, shahuye mitzvah lo mishahinan. Get done what you have to do in life. Don't delay, don't tarry. Live a life of matzah. This is what, this is what the Chacham says. The Chacham says, tonight, we're going to read this. Chacham Mahu Omer, what does the Chacham say in the Haggadah? Ma'edos, Vachukim, Bamishpatim. What are all these mitzvahs? The great Sadiq of Levi Yitzhak Abedichev says, you know what the Chacham is asking? Chacham is saying, Tate, Father, all you need in Yiddishkeit is one mitzvah. What's the one mitzvah? Matzah. If you have matzah, you don't need anything else. Because what does matzah teach us? Shahuye mitzvah. Lo mishahinan, don't delay. Act now. Mitzah bali adech al tach mitzena. Opportunity presents itself. Grab it, take it, run with it. If you have that hashkafa in life, then and you take advantage of your opportunities as they present themselves, then what other mitzvah do you need? What other hashkafa do you need? If you believe that matzah, again, matzah also represents the hashkafa as Hashem. We left, we left Mitzrayim in such haste because Chesh Baruch Hu told us to go and we followed. Chesh Baruch Hu runs the world, that's number one. Follow him wherever he goes. And number two, don't delay. The opportunities that come up in life seize them. So the, the Chacham says to his father, we're going to hear the Chacham say tonight, Tata, why do I need everything else? Why do I need all the other mitzvahs? All I need is matzah. All I need is matzah in life. Because shahuye mitzvah lo mishahinah. Tzarev Pesach, I didn't make this cycle, right? I, I just go ahead and teach the Gemara. I will say, isn't this absolutely incredible? Isn't this incredible? Erev Pesach, Erev Pesach, in a seven and a half year cycle. By the way, we're not finished. I will say, so it says the Gemara, what do you see from the Gemara? Halal Kalamai, so we don't delay, but rather, again, we force the brothers to take action now. So the Gemara says, I'm a base. It's time. So I just want to point out, we still haven't answered our question, which is at the end of the day, at the end of the day, which is more preferable? Right, Yibum with a younger brother or Chalitza with an older brother. All we've established, I will say, is that what? We're not going to delay, right? We're definitely not going to tarry. That's for sure. So it's time to be able to call it, I will play Yidibi as Katan Adifa. So I will say, ultimately, again, an alternate version of this, that everyone agrees that if there's an opportunity for Yibum with one of the brothers, even if it's the youngest brother, that of course is preferable, right? If one of the brothers is willing to perform Yibum, then Halakha Lamaisa will always take that option. Keep Ligi. So I will say, interestingly enough, where does the Machlokas come up? Bechalitza's Katan, with Chalitza of a younger brother. Listen to this. Vahachi Yitmar, this is what it means to say. Chalitza's Katan, Bechalitza's Gadol. So I will say, here's an interesting discussion. 
if there's a choice between a chalitza of a younger brother and chalitza of an older brother. So we'll say, isn't this interesting? In other words, let's say you have two brothers, ultimately, again, who are willing to go ahead and perform chalitza. So who should do it? So the Gemara says, so pligi bar Rabbi Yochanan Rabbi Yoshua ben Levi. It's machlokes. Chad amar chalitza's god ladifa. One says chalitza of the older brother is adif. The chad amar ki had And the other opinion says that halach halamaisa, they're the same. They're the same. The equivalent chalitza is chalitza is chalitza. Makes absolutely no difference who is performing it. So man amar chalitza's god ladifa. The opinion that says that chalitza's god is better. The mitzvah So we'll say because again, halacha lamaisa, the primary mitzvah of Gibbum rests with the older brother. The idok, the other opinion, will say, ki aminon mitzvah begadol le'inyan yibum. When do we say that halacha lamaisa, the older brother, has a greater obligation? That's with the mitzvah of yibum. Aval le'inyan chalitza kadadininu. But we'll say ultimately again, when it comes to chalitza, they're the same. So we'll say, I just want to point out, this is now a new layer of tension. So just to keep in mind what we have going on over here. So first of all, the principle that we've, well, what's the principle that everyone agrees with? Who do we start with when it comes to the mitzvah of Yibam? Who do we start with? The Gadol, the oldest surviving brother. So we'll say that's uncontested. Everyone agrees, right? So that's piece one. Piece two, then is we know that if the older brother doesn't want to act, what do we do? Go down the list. No one wants to act, what do we do? Go back to the brother. Go back to the brother. Oldest brother. Now both say, I, what else don't we do? If they say, wait for this one, wait for that one, do we wait? Do we wait? We wait for no one, right? But rather, again, we will force the older surviving brother to take action. Why? Shahuye mitzvah lo mishahinon. Because we don't delay the performance of this mitzvah or for that matter, any mitzvah. Now both say, here is the machlokas. We have multiple brothers who are willing to take different actions. Right? Different actions. So in category number one, I have an older brother who's willing to do yibum, a younger brother who's willing to do chalitza. Right? In case number two, now we have not resolved that yet. In case number two, I have two brothers willing to do chalitza, oldest brother and younger brother. So I both say, in case number one, the shayla is, on one hand, I have mitzvah begadol, but the gadol only wants to do chalitza. But yet, we normally assume that Yibam is preferred, but that's only coming from the younger brother. So how do I balance all of that? In case number two, all I have is Chalitza on the table, when the only option is Chalitza, does it matter who's doing it? So those are the two things in play over here. So it says the Gemara. So the Gemara says, so, uh, good. So when we go back for that, it's like, So when we go back for that, so we'll say, one opinion says that no, no, chalitza of an older brother is still is still preferable, and the other opinion says, other opinion says no, chalitza is chalitza is chalitza. Once chalitza is being the only time that the older brother has preference or both sides is where by yibum. But once chalitza is going to be done, it doesn't matter who's doing chalitza. Says the Raman Amar chalitza is God ladifa. The opinion that says that chalitza of an older brother is preferable. Doha mitzvah begadol. Because at the end of the day, I'll say the, the Mishnah says mitzvah begadol. That's still at the end of the day, the mitzvah is for the oldest brother to take action. Whether that is going to be yibum or chalitza. To which the rest of the idach, the other opinion will say, kiyarminan mitzvah begadol. When we say ultimately again that the mitzvah is begadol, le'inyan yibum. That's for yibum. Ava le'inyan chalitza kebahadadininu. I will say, but for chalitza, they're absolutely the same. We'll say this, this is the tension. So let's analyze. So Tsinan, Lo Ratsu, if the brothers did not want to act, so we'll say, let's say he went down the line of the brothers and no one wanted to do anything. Chosrin Eitzel Godel. We go back to the oldest brother. So my love, Lo Ratsu Liyabim El Alachlots. So we'll say, isn't the case where they didn't want, they, we went down the list, none of the brothers wanted to do Yibom, but they're willing to do Chalitza. Vikhatoni Chosrin Eitzel Godel. And we said that, what did Allah saw? We go back to the oldest brother. I will say, what do you see from there? Shmamino, chalitzas gadol adifa. I will say, you see from there that what did I look at? So, chalitza of the older brother is still preferable to chalitza of the younger brother. To which the Lord says, lo, lo, sorry, lo, lo ratsu, lo lachlos for lo liyabe. No, no, no. The case was where the other brothers didn't want to do anything. They didn't want to do yibum or chalitza. Dikha basa gabi gadol lo ratsu lo lachlos lo liyabe. I will say, same way that by the older brother initially, he did not want to do chalitza or yibum. Ella and my chosen Eitzel Gadol. So we'll say, if that's the case, why do we go back to the Gadol? Ultimately, again, to force him. 
we go back to the Gadol to force him to take action. I lichbi lidido. Why don't we force the other brothers? Kevan the mitzvah alei ramiot lidide kaifinon. At the ultimate, at the end of the day, since the halacha is that the mitzvah is with the oldest brother, therefore again we compel him to take action. So Tashma, let's analyze. Tala begadol achiyam medina sayam ein shomer lo. So I say, remember again we said before that halacha lemais. Let's say the brothers say, you know what, our oldest brother Shimon is overseas. Let's wait till he gets back and we'll figure out what to do. So what's Talach HaBosai? We don't listen to the brothers. Rather, we force the brothers who are in front of us to take action. And if you hold that Chalitza of the oldest brother is preferable, then what? Why do we not wait for the oldest brother to come back? Let's wait. Let's wait. Maybe what? Maybe he'll come back and do Chalitza. And if that's the case as well, we also don't wait for the youngest brother to get older to do Yibum. So I will say, what do you see from here? So I will say, it's interesting because the Gemara didn't answer its question. Right? The only principle that the Gemara keeps coming back to that we agree on is that we do not delay the mitzvah. We do not delay the mitzvah. We'll say you can't allow the mitzvah to become chametz, right? We don't delay the mitzvah. So that's the. So I just want to point out the Gemara has not has does, does not have seen does, has not resolved either of the two questions yet, right? Question number one: At the end of the day, oldest brother wants to chalitza, youngest brother wants to do yibum. Who, which one is better? And question number two: Two brother, right? Oldest brother, youngest brother, both willing to do chalitza. Does it matter who does it? So we'll say, what the Gemara keeps trying to do is to try to bring a proof from the Mishnah for one of these positions. It turns out you can't really bring a definitive proof from the Mishnah because the Mishnah can be read either way. Or you can make, you can make opposite inferences, opposing inferences from the Mishnah. The one principle that, the Mishnah, that everyone agrees with is that what? We're not delaying. We're not delaying. So we'll say, listen to this. So Tanan Hassam. We'll say, here we go. So Tanan Hassam, we learned. Mitzvah Yibum Kodemes Le Mitzvah Chalitza. So we'll say one thing we, and I'll tell you the Rambam at the end of this, at the end of this year. We have another Mishnah, so listen to this. Mitzvah Yibom Kodom Mitzvah Mitzvah Chalitza. Right? So we'll say the Gemara says, really, the Mitzvah of Yibom is preferable over Chalitza. Ideally, we want Yibom. So the Gemara says, Barishon Hashayim is Kavn Hashayim Mitzvah. That was only true originally when, when the surviving brother, when he, did, when he did Yibom, had in mind that he was doing Yibom for the sake of the Mitzvah. However, but now, unfortunately, again, when people do yibum, they often don't have in mind for the mitzvah. So we'll say, what does that mean? We'll see what this means in just a moment. We'll say, now, presently, the way we conduct ourselves is, chalitza is preferable over yibum. So we'll say, this is a fascinating societal statement. Originally, Chazal said, yibum is preferable over chalitza. But that was when people were doing yibum for the right reasons. Now, when we're concerned that people are doing yibum for ulterior motives, then the mitzvah of chalitza is preferable to the mitzvah of yibum. So the Gemara Sa'amarav, Sarav says, in Kofin, we don't go ahead and force the yavam to do chalitza. Rather, if the yavam wants to do chalitza, he can do chalitza, chalitza. But if he wants to do yibum, ultimately, again, we'll let him do yibum as well. Kiyasu lekamei derav, when they came before Rav, Amr lehu, ibais chalutz, ibais yabim. When the, when the Yavim used to come before Rav, a Yibim case used to come before Rav, Rav would say, listen, if you want to do Chalitza, do Chalitza. If you want to do Yibim, do, yibim, do whatever you want. The Torah puts the decision in your hands. Pasuk says, Rav say, even the of the Pasuk is, Im lo yach po tsa'ish. If the man does not want to take this woman in Yibim, then Allah Chalam, I say, you can do Chalitza. The idea being that the decision of Chalitza or Yibum is totally in the hands of the Yavam. Va'af Rav Yehuda savar in Kofin. Rav Yehuda also went ahead and said, we don't force a man to do Chalitza. Rav Yehuda said, now listen to this. Where do we see this from? This is fascinating. Midi iskin Rav Yehuda begita da Chalitza. Rav Yehuda said, here's what's interesting. They used to give what's called a get Chalitza. Essentially, a get Chalitza is a document which records the Chalitza process. So a woman should have, should have a document that goes ahead and shows that she went ahead and did chalitza. So we'll say, here's the text. Here's the text from Rabbi Yehuda's Gita de Chalitza. Listen to this. Eich, plonis bas ploni, akravas yas ploni yevama kadamna lebedina. Right? So-and-so, this is, the, this is the widow. Right? Widow, the daughter of so-and-so, brought her brother-in-law, the yavam, 
right in front of us to Beisdin. Listen to this. And we will say, we'll see Ash, Ash, Ash Timodinhu means we recognize. We'll see what that means in just a moment. We recognized that so and so is the brother of the deceased. Of the deceased. We said to him, Eat obviously Yabim Yabim. So we, the basin, said to the surviving brother, If you want to do Yibum, do Yibum. Vi'ilo, and if you don't want to do Yibum, Itla le Raglach. Extend, Itla le Raglech diyamina. Go ahead and extend your right foot. Vi'itla le Ragla diyamina. And he extended his right foot. Visharas sine ma'al Raglohi. And she took off his shoe from on his foot. The Yarkas ba'an pohi. Roka de Mishazia Lebedina al Ara. And she spit in a way that the spit could be seen on the ground in front of the base. And I'll say, again, we'll get into this. It's interesting. We have not really touched at all the Chalitza process. So we'll talk about what the Chalitza process is. And I'll say, what's the, but why does the Gemara bring this down? Because what, what, what happens over here? And it, Rabbi Huda said in this, in his Get the Chalitza, it records that when the Yavam came before us, what did we tell the Yavam? What did the Basin tell the Yavam? Either do Yibum. Or chalitza, which indicates to us that what? That Allah Lamaisa, he has that option. So also I just point out something very interesting. That Allah Lamaisa, you see this tension. Now again, we've already seen this tension before about presently, do we go ahead and put Gibam out there as an option? Or do we just go ahead and tell the Yavam do chalitza? What does it depend on? It seems to depend on whether or not purity of intention is required for Yibum. If you hold that purity of intention is required for Yibum, then contemporarily, apparently once upon a time, people were able to have purity of intention. Today, we don't assume it, and therefore Allah Chalamais will tell the Yavam to do Chalitza. But if you hold that Yibum does not require purity of intention, then even contemporarily, we could allow for Yibum. So the Gemara goes weiter. So the Gemara says, so I'll say again, Ravchi Bar Avia said in the name of Rav Yehuda that they would also say Vakrino. We, we read before him that which is written in the Torah, in the, in the, in the Torah of Moshe Rabbeinu, that they would read him, they would read the Yavim, the Parsha of Chalitza. Good. Rav Yosef Gemara says, Ashtemudinhu pligi barav achav ravina. Rav Yosef, what does it mean? The, the, right, the, the document said, we recognized that this man who's showing up in front of us is the brother of the deceased. What does that mean? So, Pligi Baravach Ravina, Chadamar Be'edim, the Chadamar Filu Karo Filu Isha. So, I will say, do you, this is very interesting, we recognize, what does it mean we recognized him? So, Machlokes, one opinion said, you need Eidos, you need witnesses to come to Beisden to, to, to testify that Shimon is the brother of the now deceased Ruvain. The other opinion says, no, 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 you don't, you don't need Eidos, you just need someone to certify it. But the someone could be a woman, the someone could be a solitary witness, the someone could even be a relative, right? It, it, in other words, you just need someone to show up in Basin and say, yes, Shimon is the brother of Ruvain, but Allah Chalamaisi, you don't need formal testimony. We'll say, how do we pass it? We'll say, the end, and the Gemara says, it's not real testimony, it's what we call Gilu Milsa. Gilu Milsa we'll means essentially just like a certification. And a certification doesn't require real aidus. You just need someone. So it could be a woman, it could be a lone witness, it could be a relative, it could be anyone just to come to Basin and certify that indeed Shimon is Ruvain's, Shimon is Ruvain's brother. I both say, how do we pass in the other two cases? So I'll just point this out. So the Rambam Paskins are both say that if there is a choice, if there is a choice, ultimately again between Chalitza of the oldest brother, Yibum of the youngest brother, we go with Yibum of the youngest brother. Yibum is always preferable. And I will say, whether or not we do Yibum contemporarily, we'll, we'll get into that. But Lemaisa, for that Shaila, the Rambam Paskins, if right Shimon, the oldest brother, is willing to do Yibum, sorry, is willing to do Chalitza, Yehuda, the youngest brother, is willing to do Yibum, we give the right to Yehuda to Yibum because Yibum is always preferable. What happens if, right, two brothers, Shimon, oldest brother, Yehuda, youngest brother, both willing to do Chalitza, who right, doesn't matter if doesn't matter, and the answer is yes. We prefer the oldest brother do chalitza to the youngest brother. Say, Rabbi say, Allah chalamaisa, yibum is always preferable over chalitza, no matter which brother is willing to do it. And if two brothers willing to do chalitza, oldest and youngest, we give the chalitza right to the oldest brother over the youngest. Incredible. And Rabbi say, of course, again we also know we paskin shahuye mitzvah lo mishahinon. 
We do not wait. We do not delay. We do not delay. We do not kick the can down the road. We don't wait for anyone to come back from overseas. We don't wait for anyone to grow up. Halach halamaisa, yibum or chalitza are performed with the pool of people who are in front of us presently. Incredible. Both says go a little bit weiter. So both says, remember again, so now we're quoting the price we just said before. Originally, when they used to perform yibum, there was purity of intent. Purity of intent. People would perform yibum for the right reasons, for the sake of a mitzvah. So the Gemara says, in that case, mitzvah sibum called demas the chalitza. The mitzvah is chalitza. So we'll say, when there was purity of intent, we, everyone agreed that what? Yibum is preferable to chalitza. The aksha shem is kavna shem mitzvah. But now that unfortunately people don't have the right kavana, amru yibum, amru mitzvah chalitza called demas la mitzvah sibum. So we'll say, contemporarily, we say that what? That chalitza is preferable to yibum. Right, Khalid's preferable to Yibum. Why? Because Allah Khalamai said there's that there's that lack of purity of intent. Amrabi Bar Khamar Bishak, Khazru Lomar, Mitzvah Sibum Kodem Islam Mitzvah Khalitza. I will say a fascinating turn of events. Right? And now, but now contemporarily, now in our time, we've gone back to say that Yibum is preferable over Khalitza. Wow. Says the Yamar Amir Nakhba Yitzchak, Akhshure Dari. Is that because we're such tzaddik? You know, what happened over here? Rabbi say, like, right, right, think about the history of this. Originally, people did yibum for the right reasons. Salah, chalamaisap, yibum was preferable over chalitza. Then apparently, again, the generation descended a little bit. And halach chalamaisa, halach chalamaisa. We assume the purity of intent did not exist. And therefore, halach chalamaisa, chalitza was preferable. Now the Gemara comes along and says, that now, contemporarily, Yibum is preferable. So what happened? People became tzaddikim. Achshurei Dari Rashi says, B'tmiyah, v'chin is kashu adoros. Are we better now than previous generations? So let's listen to this. Me'ikara savri leka abashal, uluvasov savri leka rabbanon. No. We'll say, you know what happened? What happened is we switched opinions. We switched opinions. We'll say, in the beginning, we held like abashal, and now we hold like rabbanon. How's that? The sanya, abashal omer. Hakonis es yivim to l'shem noi, l'shem ishos, l'shem davar acher. We'll say, abashal says, if the Yavam does Yibum, and the reason he's doing Yibum is why? Because he finds the Yavam attractive. She's very beautiful. Or ultimately, again, because, hey, he's single anyway. So why not? This is easier, right? There's a Shidduch crisis. So why not just go? This woman is right in front of me anyway, right? Or the Shem Dabra Acher. Or for any other reason. We'll say any other reason means she has money. She has nice midos. She's a good conversationalist. Whatever, whatever it is. The point over here is he's marrying her. He's ra- marrying her. Ultimately, again, not just simply to perform the mitzvah, but ultimately, again, some additional ulterior motive. Kilu pogea be'erva. So Abishol says, I think that's as if he's having relations with his brother's wife, and it's an erva. The karov ani be'enei, the karov, the karov ani be'enei, lios havlad mamzer. Wow. And because ultimately, again, Abishol would treat this case like an erva, I think the offspring is like a mamzer. Now, he doesn't say it's like a mamzer. He says, Karavainai, right? He says, I'm, 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 I'm almost close. I'm close to ultimately, again, declaring the offspring here a mamzer. A mamzer. So again, Abishol is of the opinion that Yibum only works if there is absolute unequivocal purity of intent, which means what? That halacha lamaisa, halacha the only reason he's doing Yibum is why? Is why? For the mitzvah. Any other ulterior motive, by definition, fundamentally undermines what is going on here. And the say makes it like an erva situation. The Chum say, Yevama, Yevama, let me come back The say, the Chum say, the Pasuk just says, do Yivam, right? The Pasuk doesn't make any mention of purity of intent. All it says is do yibum. So therefore, all you have to do is do yibum. There's, there's no purity of intent that's needed. So man, so both we'll say, say for again, the Gemara is suggesting over here, originally we held like Abishol. And then what happened? Then what happened? Somehow, over time, we switched to the opinion of the Rabbanon. And therefore, again, even contemporarily, we could do yibum because yibum doesn't require that purity of intent. So man, tana lahadatan Rabbanon, yibam yavala mitzvah, shebetchila haisala bichlal heter. So we'll say, listen to this. Pasik says, the Yavam will do Yibam. Now listen to this. The Bible says, Shebetchil says, in the beginning, originally, so we'll call her Rachel, remember again, Ruben's wife, was Mutter to Shimon. The Bible says, when was Rachel Mutter to Shimon? Before she married Ruben. Right, originally she was, right, she was Mutter. Then she was Mutaris. What happens? Nasra. then she became Asura. When did she become Asura? When? Right? When she married Ruben. Then she became Eshazach. Chazra v'hutra. 
then she becomes mutter again. When does she become mutter again? When? When Ruvain dies. So Yochel Tachzor that Teir Arishon. You might first why I will say you might have thought therefore she returns back to original Hetzer. In other words, that you can marry her no matter do Yibum no matter what your intentions. Talmud Lomar Yevamo Yava Aleha Mitzvah. Yevamo Yava Aleha. There was say the pasuk says ultimately again Yevamo Yava Aleha. So Mitzvah Mantana. Ultimately, I will say who says that you have to have in mind only for the Mitzvah. Am Rabbi Yisak Bar Abdimi Abashalhi. This is what it means. I Abashal Vachi Kamar. Yavama Yavala, Yavama Yavala. So Pasik says, Yavam will do Yibum. Mitzvah. Shebitrila. So we'll say, Yabashal holds that the only way Yavama Yavala, the only way for the Yavam to do Yibum is how? Is if he has explicit intent for the mitzvah. If he doesn't have intent for the mitzvah, then what, Rabbi Say? Then what? According to Abashal? It's Asr. It's Asr. It's Pogea Be'eshes Ach. Karov Havlad Lios Mamzer. He says Shebetchila Haisalav Bichal Heter. Originally, Rachel was mutter to Shimon. When was she mutter to Shimon? When before she married Reuven. So the Gemara says Ratzel Hashem Noi Kansa. Ratzel Hashem Ishos Kansa. So I'll say again. And when she was muteres to Shimon, he can marry her for whatever reason. You can marry a woman for whatever reason you want. For her good looks, for her money, for whatever reason, for her midos. You can marry for whatever for whatever purpose you want. However. Now once, now once Rachel marries Ruvain, so Kansa Nasra. So ultimately she becomes Asura, Zeshasach, brother's wife. Chazra Vohotra, now Ruvain dies. She once again becomes she once again becomes permitted, right? Through the mechanism of Yibum. Yachal Tachra Lahatera Harishon. You might have thought that she returns to her original state of permissiveness, of permissibility. I will say now remember again, in her original state of permissibility, right? You're permitted, right? Shimon will be permitted to marry her for what purpose? For what purpose? For whatever reason he wanted. You might have thought, therefore, in Yibum also. He could do Yibam for whatever reason he wants. Tamulomar Yivama Yavo Aleha Lemitzvah. Therefore, we'll say the Pasik says, Yivama Yavo Aleha, only for Yibam, only for Mitzvah. We'll say, so this is the position of Abishol. If you're going to perform Yibam, there must be absolute purity of intent, only for the Mitzvah and for the Mitzvah only. And if there's no purity, of, if there's not absolute purity of intent, don't do Yibam, only do Chalitza. Because if you were to do Yibam in that situation, it mamish is like Arias. It is like Eishas Ach, incredible. Rav Am Rav says, "Afilu Tim Rabbanon, give me the Rabbanon." Rav Ach, he wants to do Rabbanon. Mean to say, "Yavam Yavam Leha, right Mitzvah." Pasuk said, "The Yavam should do Yibam." It's a Mitzvah. Shebetchila Haisa Bichlal Heter. Originally, ultimately, again, this woman was permitted, right Bichlal Heter, right Bichlal Heter. So remember again, before Rachel marries, before Rachel marries Ruvain. Ultimately, again, she's permitted to Shimon. Ratsa Konsa, Ratsa Eno Konsa. See, if he wants to go ahead, if Shimon wants to marry, he can marry. He doesn't want to marry, he doesn't have to marry her. Neesra, once she marries Ruvain. So what happens after that? Neesra, she becomes prohibited to Shimon as his brother's wife. Chazra, what happens? Chazra Vodra, now Ruvain dies. Once again, she becomes permitted ultimately to Shimon. So Yachol Tachzra, that Teira Rishon, Ratsa Konsa, Ratsa Eno Konsa. So the Gemara, and let's say now again, Shimon has it now, Ruvain dies. You would have thought she returns back to her permitted status. And if Shimon wants to marry, he can't marry, doesn't want to marry, doesn't have to marry her. Ratsa Eno Konsa, what do you mean he doesn't, what do you mean he doesn't have to marry her? Ha'agidaba. Right? Ultimately, again, remember, Shimon has to do something. Why does Shimon have to do something? Because she's connected to him. How is she connected to him? There's a Zeka, she's a Yavam. Rather, again, ha Gidaba, Bichdei Tipuk, could she go out with nothing? Ela Ratza Konsa, Ratza Cholitzla. So you might have thought again that Allah Chalamai said he could do Yibam with her, he could do Chalitza with her. Tamud Lomar, Yavamo Yavo Aleha, Mitzvah. Therefore, again, the Pasik says the Yavam, the Yavam should do Yibam. That's the message. Both say, so the fundamental machlokis is like this. According to Abishal, Yavama Yavo Aleha Mitzvah means that what? The only way to perform Yibam was, is for a mitzvah, absolute purity of intent. If there's a lack of purity of intent, he can't do Yibam. So the Rabbanon say, no, Yavama Yavo Aleha just means that it's preferable to do Yibam over Chalitza. But Allah say, even if there's not purity of intent, the mitzvah is still okay. I will say, this is the end of the suya. But I just want to read you one more line, and this is the last line we're going to do before Yom Tiv. Eimaresha, matzos teachel b'makom kadosh. I was saying, I don't even know what to say. Seven and a half year cycle. And the last words on the daf on Erev Pesach are matzos teachel b'makom kadosh. I was saying, 
sometimes you wake up to Yavamis and you say to yourself, what am I doing here? Yeah. Right? What, like, what? Even I say, I give the share. And sometimes it's like, what, what, what am I doing? I say, and then sometimes the Kaddish Baruch Hu gives you a little kiss on the head and says, Shefala, thank you so much for waking up early every single morning and learning my Torah. Thank you so much for showing up day in and day out. And I will say, you know what this is? I want to point out, by the way, this Pasuk, Matzah, Kamakam Kaddish, is not, is not the Mitzvah of Matzah. It's actually by Karban Mincha. It's Karban Mincha. But I will say, but at the end of the day, this is HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Gityantif to us. This is the Ribbono Shalom wishing us a Gityantif. And he's telling us, just understand that tonight, when you sit by your Seder and you eat matzah, matzah is te'achal. And I will say, wherever you eat matzah tonight, the makam kadosh. Ultimately, again, just know, where's the makam kadosh? I will say, the, matzah, the makam kadosh, the holy place, is wherever we're going to have our Seder. The makam kadosh is ultimately the place we're going to consume our matzahs. The Rebbe Shalom is wishing us a beautiful and good yantiv. And I will say, we should be zocha, that Amir Hashem, to consume our matzahs, Bekidusha betara, and Amir Hashem transfer that sanctity onto the very makam in which we have our seed. I will say, we'll stop over here today. Shkayach, everyone. All right, Chabra on Zoom. Richard, Jerry, Eretz, Svel, Contingent. Everyone have a wonderful, wonderful yontem. Chag Kasher v'Sameach.